when I was in elementary school, like a lot of people did a lot of like doodling. I made a ton of uh, comics that were just ripping off the plots of like Star Wars and things like that. I had a radio show in college for a little while with some friends. And then I did kind of improv comedy. A friend that I made, a local artist, Matt Ciso, uh, who was a guest on our show, invited me over to paint at his place. And it kind of gave me permission to, in a way, uh, through his encouragement to kind of go down this avenue again and to try and paint and just mess around. And I found that I really attached to it. Come on in. And I wanted to show everybody my studio space. So come on up. These many kind of old and dusty stairs. <laughs> Uh, we are on 16th Street Heights, technically, Upper 14th Street Northwest in DC. And we are at the top of the third floor walk up here. And here's my space. I would say I sort of subscribe to the messy desk, busy mind kind of philosophy in that I know where everything is, but if I'm organizing stuff on that rack, that means I'm gonna be out of town or something. Um, I usually kind of rotate between many different brush sizes. I'm not super picky um, as long as they are not totally dried up, um, but I try to clean them every night before I leave. Um, and that keeps everything good and crispy. Um, the pieces you see here are for an upcoming solo show that I'm doing called Positive Fury. Um, and so they're all kind of laid out here. Normally things are a little bit more organized but I've got them out here for their kind of final finishing touches before I end up taking them to the gallery. It's sort of a mix here. So it looks like a makeup brush I really love because you can put on pretty thick layers of paint and get a nice shape out of it. Um, so if you're putting down big thick lines, it's pretty nice. Round guy, kind of all around pinch hitter, some for similar stuff. This one, when you're putting down background colors, Pretty good coverage. It's smaller than a normal, you know, home paint brush, but bigger than what I would normally use. And swapping between these two little guys, when you're doing detailed work, you need some good small brushes. I don't know the millimeters or anything. I don't really concern myself with that, but um, I have about 30 of these. And when you're working on something with many different little colors, I will burn through all of them in a painting session and then clean them all and bring them back the next day. Um, uh, not on a weekly basis, but I would say quarterly, I'm burning through something this size. What is this, 16 ounces worth? So I would say these last pretty long, especially buying higher quality paint, you do have to use less, which is nice. Um, but I do rotate in cheap ass paints because some of them look cool. So I bought this, for example, in Portugal, it was like two euro 50 and it's kind of shitty, but it makes a pretty cool neon tone that even nicer paints don't. You just have to mix it in with something else. Um, but I would say, yeah, quarterly, I'm you know making a big paint buy is usually what I try to do. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of these pieces getting ready for the solo show here. Um, so these were made between 2020, 2022. A lot of these are 2021s. Uh, so you've got a pretty popular one, this you will die, earth will burn, hold nothing back. Just kind of a, a little bit about climate, climate change, but a little bit about uh, not giving up on your dreams. I've got Making Joy Toys, which is a portrait of my friend Mason, who owns a do-it-yourself motorcycle garage. And this Playboy Life, too much for me, sort of a uh, Sean Connery portrait, but also uh, based on the Lonely Island song about the after party. Um, so not everything is the deepest of cuts around here. Yeah, and so up here, I try to put everything that other people have sent me. So um, another artist, Sarah Diani, did a nice portrait of me. I have a portrait of my motorcycle by this artist, Louis Vent. Uh, Jimmy Carter by at Gularama. Um, this was from a Don Lewis party that I went to. And my friend Andrew made me this. So I just love to be surrounded by these awesome things that other people have made me. Um, and it just makes me smile, kind of thinking about things that I've given them, things they've given me. And it's fun to just have a little collection here uh, to look at, in addition to the things that I have at home. Yeah, this is pretty much just my studio where I come to create. I'm really psyched about my solo show, which will be on Friday, May 6th from 7 to 9 p.m. 
52 O Street Northwest at Um Gallery. Um, I hope to see you there. It's the culmination of a lot of work over the past two years, and I think it's gonna be a blast. You know, I think for me it is trying to see the world a little bit more vibrantly, and that has kind of, it's evolved over time in my practice, um, but I think especially, it was really right before COVID. I went on a residency experience in Japan, um, where it was at like an hour west of Tokyo, that they kind of consider the suburbs to me still pretty densely urban. But being in this town, I had so much signage and kind of color and brightness that I kind of adapted as my palette at that time. And it's a lot of the same colors that I'm still using now, these kind of neons, everything, you know, not just, um, kind of like the tubes in signage, but even just regular everyday things. Um, and so I kind of took that palette, it came home, and now I've kind of applied and amplified it. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs>